Welcome back to the shop. I want to extend a special thank you to all of the new subscribers that have joined the channel. As you can see, the table for the drill press we've been working on has this rather large bozo mark in the top of it. I want to machine it so it's flat again and get rid of those, but I'm trying to figure out here how I can clamp this to the table. It's not a precision machine, so I know it doesn't have to be perfect, but I think these bosses on the bottom of the table may be useful. One idea I have is to use some parallels and one, two, three blocks on the underside of the table. This should lift the table off from the milling machine enough to clear those ribs and give me something to clamp. Well, I think this will work fairly good for what I needed to do. It should be pretty secure, but now i got to figure out how to clamp this down to the table so it doesn't move. The lip of the drip tail is lower than the face of the table, and I might be able to take advantage of that. If I take this piece of pipe and cut it in half, then that could be sat on top of that lip and then I just need to figure out how to hold that pipe down. Got some ideas and I think it'll start to become apparent the further along I get, but the first thing I need to do is to cut this pipe in half. I've been having some issues with this Harbor Freight bandsaw. It wants to cut to the right. Um, as you're looking at this. I think it's just a bad blade, although I should probably re-examine all of the adjustments that I can make on this thing. When I first got this bandsaw, I only had to do a little bit of adjusting and was able to cut a 1 16th inch slice off of a piece of 1 inch square tube with no problems at all. Now I feel like I'm lucky if my cut isn't anything more than a 10 or 15 degree angle. Just a quick trip over to the belt sandal to get rid of any burrs and to flatten out those uneven edges. I think I'm better served if I try to make four different clamps rather than two long ones on each side. So I'm going to cut these in half. These are eventually going to get welded, so I might as well spend some time cleaning them up a bit. I'm going to attach those pipe halves to some flat bar that I'll bend to a 90, and then I can use that to hold it down to the table. And you can see just how bad this bandsaw has been cutting. It's just not cutting straight at all. If you got any ideas of what I can do here, is it a blade or is it adjustment, leave me a comment. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. mind these things being a little square the bandsaw does such a terrible job that I need to use the belt sander to square up the edges no plans here just designing as I go I need to figure out just where to make the bend in this flat bar so I'm just setting it up next to this uh, pipe half so I can mark it with a sharpie I figure it'll probably be easier to drill the holes in these straps where the mounting stud will go now before I bend it
just going to put these straps into my bench vise and I want to put a little heat on the bend line. Um, probably not necessary, but I also don't feel like dragging over my oxyacetylene torch. So I'm just going to use a little map gas, get it hot, and then whack on it with a hammer. So what I plan to do here is to take these bent pieces and weld them to the half pipe. And then that will give me a way of grabbing onto the lip of that drip tray and mounting it down hard on the table. But I'm also realizing after looking at this that I think that those half pipes are still too long and I think I want to cut them down again. I think this size here is going to work even better and that way I can have two clamps on each side. I'm going to use the TIG torch to go ahead and tack these together on the mill table. Got the welder set to 125 amps and I'm using the push button on the torch itself so when I hit that button it will go straight to 125 amps right away. I like doing tack welds like this because it really does do the minimum amount of heat input into the part. With each of them tacked together, now I can bring them back over to the bench and I'll finish welding them out with some 332 inch ER70S-2 TIG wire. I'm still running about 125 amps, but I'm using the foot pedal now to control the heat input.
Well, we're about ready to get this going, so the first thing I want to do is remove the vise off of the mill table, which I dread doing because I really don't want to tram this back in later. Always a good idea to make sure the table's clean and free of any swarf before you start fixturing something up. As I did when I mocked this up, I'll start with a couple of parallels and make sure that they're spaced right. And then we'll stack the one, two, three blocks and start clamping this down. And here you should be able to tell just how these clamps are working. I am going to take some pieces of rag and put them inside the half pipe to hopefully not do as any more damage to the paint than I need to. I probably should have waited until the machining was done before I painted them, but I guess I was a bit impatient, wanted to see how this color was going to look. I do want to see just how flat the table is with it fixtured here because I don't want to take off any more material than I need to. And if I have to, I can shim the undersides of the 123 block. So I've got a stair at 196 just set into my drill chuck here so I can get a good reading on just how flat this thing is fixtured. Well, it looks like we're about 10 to 12 thousandths difference from front to back, which isn't terrible, but I do want to improve that. I put some brass shim stock on top of the 123 blocks on the back side of the drill press table, and I think that will take care of the difference from front to back. I've got my new fly cutter mounted up in a three quarter inch collet into the spindle of the bridge port. This will be its first real use on a real project. I've got the mill in low gear. Um, I want to adjust the speed of the mill to be about 250 to 300 RPM. I think that sounds like it should be an appropriate RPM for this size of a cutter. I'm going to uh, slowly raise the table until I touch off. And before I do any other adjustments, I want to move the table all the way to the left so I can uh, set my depth of cut. Well, I raised the table about five and a half thousandths, and I've got the table feed probably around three inches per minute. But you can see something isn't quite right with the way this is cutting. The cutter is removing material on the back side of the piece, but not on the front side. 
my thinking right around here is that maybe this drill press table is a bit domed and I really didn't see it at first. But I only took a few thousand, so we'll see how this goes. I'm going to let this pass complete, and then we'll complete the other half of the table, and then go from there. As you can see here, as I'm starting the second part of this, I haven't adjusted the height of the fly cutter at all, and it's cutting nothing. And that's where it dawned on me that the head of the bridge port is out of tram. So I'm going to put the camera down for a minute, take this cutter out, put in my tramming aid, and see if I can't get this mill back in shape. So I took a break from this for about a half an hour and I think I have the table nod and the angle trammed in and as I touch off here you can see that it is making a fairly complete uh, circle all the way around. So I don't think it's perfect. I think I'm still out of tram a little bit but I got it as close as I could. I'd like to invest in one of those tramming aids that uh, Edge Technology sells. It has a dual dial indicator set up. I think that would make it a oh, heck of a lot easier. I'll have to put it on my Christmas list. Well, it's not the mirror finish that we all hope for, but I think this will do. I just don't think that this material machines very well, at least not with my setup. I'm not exactly sure what I could do to improve it. Yeah, it's not a perfect finish, but it's actually not too bad. The mating line between the two passes um, you can't really feel where they meet so I think I've got the tram at least dialed in reasonably well for now well in an effort to try to make this finish a little bit better I'm going to use some WD-40 and a flat stone to see if I can't polish out any of those imperfections. I think that cleaned it up a little bit better. Again, it's not perfect, but it's flat. It's not a precision machine. Uh, it just needs to be at least reasonably decent looking. Well, my homemade clamps served their purpose very well. It kept this thing rigid enough to where I could use the fly cutter on it and get a decent finish. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video and if you did like it I would appreciate a thumbs up 
And as always, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget the bell icon. You'll get notified whenever I publish a new video. I found that only about 20% of the people that watch these videos are actually subscribers. So hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and hopefully uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.